The continental United States southernmost subtropical paradise, Key West, attracts millions of people each year. And it's no wonder the beautiful climate, landscape, architecture, and unique history are unlike anywhere else in the states. At only four miles long by two miles wide, Key West is a small island, so everything is pretty easy to get to by bike. This is our preferred method of transportation in Key West for several reasons. One, it saves you money as there is almost no free parking anywhere on the island. You'll have to pay to park your car. And two, biking is slow paced and allows you to take in the cheerful pastel colors and the gingerbread wood and lace work on the conch homes. A preferred evening in Key West for us is biking around the streets, just taking in all the beauty and having dinner at one of the local restaurants. If it's your first time in Key West and you're anything like me, you might be expecting the most beautiful stretches of white, soft, sandy beaches. But that is not the case here due to the coral reef that extends from Key Largo to Dry Tortugas National Park. The reef prevents natural beach formation because waves do not crash on shore here as they do in mainland Florida. So if you're looking for the best beaches in Florida, I would look on the mainland. And a little side note, because we have traveled to all the beaches in Florida, I will be making a video soon about the best ones. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. But nevertheless, Key West does have three main beaches. Smathers Beach is the largest public beach in Key West. This is Smathers Beach. It's a long stretch of beach here on the side of the island. There is some seaweed, but they usually clean it up every day or every other day. The water is definitely more calm on this side than Fort Zachary Taylor. There is some airport noise because the airport is right there on this side of the street. So, But we love this beach because it's calm. It's pretty, has the palms. There's paid parking all along the, the road here. So this is the parking at Smathers Beach. You park on the road and pay, or you can come by bike and the beach is over there. Higgs Beach, which is a little bit smaller in length than Smathers, but is similar in that the water is calm and it has palms too, has a playground, pier, and a restaurant. The third beach is at Fort Zachary Taylor State Park. There is an admission fee to get in here since it's a state park. The beach here is more rough, larger waves, and not as sandy as the first two. There are rocks and shells under the water, so I do recommend water shoes for this beach. You can also explore the fort included in the admission, which is pretty cool if you love history. There are a few more beaches at the end of streets, like Dog Beach and Simonton Street Beach, but the first three are the main beaches in Key West. We need to address the Key West chickens. Yes, there are hundreds of chickens roaming the streets of Key West. They are descendants of jungle fowl that originated in Cuba and the Caribbean islands. They were brought here by the early island inhabitants and used as food. Roosters were also used in the now illegal sport of cockfighting. Once that became illegal, they were mostly just released. There really aren't any predators except hawks, so the population can get out of control. Some people find them annoying, but I love chickens and I find them charming every time I'm in Key West. Key West isn't the only city in Florida that has free roaming chickens, but it is probably the most popular. On previous trips to Key West, I've opted out of visiting the Key West Butterfly and Nature Conservatory because I thought I've already been to conservatories and this one can't be any different. But on our most recent trip, I decided to finally check it out. These are my first impressions as soon as I stepped into the conservatory. Okay, first of all, this is the most butterflies that I've seen flying around in any conservatory I've ever been to. Just look at them. They're everywhere. This is amazing. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, so beautiful. The Key West Conservatory is loaded with all kinds of butterflies. I've never seen so many butterflies in one room before, and all the colorful birds that I've never seen before. They even have a flamingo pair, scarlet and red. I don't know about you, but I've never been to a conservatory that has flamingos. This conservatory definitely stands out from all the rest, and I'm kicking myself for not going there sooner. It's really like a fairy tale world in there. One of Key West's most prominent residents was Ernest Hemingway. For $17 per person, you can tour the house he called home for eight years. Definitely visit if you're a fan of Mr. Hemingway, but even if you're not, the Spanish colonial house is beautiful itself, unlike any other house on the island.
Others visit not for Ernest or the house, but for the cats. The six-toed cats, that is. Yes, that's right. The Hemingway house is home to six-toed cats, which are descendants of Hemingway's own six-toed kitty. So a quick money saving tip, go to the Hemingway House first if you're planning on going to the Hemingway House and the Butterfly Conservatory because at the Hemingway House they have $2 off admission to the Key West Butterfly and Nature Conservatory so you can save yourself a little bit of cash. This is the southernmost point. Probably the most touristy thing to do in Key West is take a picture by the southernmost point buoy. During the day there's always a line of tourists waiting to take a photo by the buoy. Personally, we've never done that since we don't want to waste our time standing in line while we could be doing something fun, but it's there if it's something that you're interested in. Key West is also the end of US Route 1, or the beginning depending on where you start. So there are signs up for that too if you want to check it out. We have been to the other end at Fort Kent, Maine, so it was kind of cool to see this end of it too. We are on Duval Street in Key West, and this is the happening place where everything goes on. There's a bunch of touristy stores, a lot of good restaurants too, and this is a place to be to walk around in the evenings or during the day just to enjoy everything. Since you're on an island, you have to do something out on the water. Jet ski tours, sunset cruises, or fishing charters, take your pick, you can't go wrong. I love seafood and have always wanted to catch a fish and cook it up for dinner that same day, fresh from the ocean, and we did just that. We went with Cora Beth fishing and spent five hours out on the water catching our dinner. It was my first time on a fishing charter, so I was a little bit nervous, as with anything you do for the first time, but there was no need to be at all. Captain Cory and Marshall were very kind, knowledgeable about their craft, and patient as I did end up losing three hooks during our trip. We had a great time out on the water, I recommend Corbett fishing for anyone, any experience level, any age. As long as you can hold a fishing pole, you're good to go. So we have Captain Corey here with fishing boat Corbett, cleaning our catch for the day. We had so much fun out on the water today. Got lots of fish. We got 12 fish. But talk to a little bit about your fishing company. It's for everybody, right? Anybody yeah. can come out. Absolutely. Yeah, we do like a, a ticketed boat, so you don't have to have a private charter. It's you know, if you have a couple of people and you don't want to charter a whole boat for the day, you can buy a ticket and we take you out and it's cool. Everyone gets to fish for the day. You get to, it's not like you sit in a seat and wait for the rod to bend. You're actively fishing all day long, holding the rod, and, uh, yeah. waiting for a bite. And when you get a bite, you get to hook it, reel it in yourself. And then yeah. you have a crew that comes over and takes care of everything. You know, getting them off the hook and getting them on ice and you know, all exactly. that stuff. So yeah. yeah been down here for a little over a year now and I've been down here since 2005 doing this. Wow. From New Hampshire down to Key West. Yeah, originally from New Hampshire and we got out of the cold and used to do winters here and summers there and I've had enough snow for a lifetime. Thank you for taking us out there and taking care of us. It was so much yeah, fun. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. I'm glad you enjoyed yourselves. The crew cleans your catch for you. You can take it home and cook it up like we did, or there are restaurants right there like Half Shell Raw Bar that can cook it up for you. You pay per pound. We are in Mallory Square right now in Key West. Right here on the water, relaxing with my fans right there. Anyways, this is a nice place to come to watch the sunset or just to stroll on the water. There's a Mallory Square Market behind the square here. You can buy all the touristy things there, like keychains, ornaments, whatever you want is in there. One fun thing you can do here, see if you can catch yourself on the live cam. There's a live cam behind us on YouTube. Type in Mallory Square Key West live cam. There's like a 20, 30 second lag, but you should be able to see yourself. A great place to stop if you have kids is the Truman Waterfront Park. There's a free splash pad and playground for different age groups. Just like anywhere else in Key West, you do have to pay for parking $4 an hour. The park has beautiful ocean views and you can check out the Coast Guard ship. It also has fitness station, it's a great place for biking. Plenty of benches to watch the sunset from. Just an awesome, expansive waterfront park. Climb 88 steps to the top of the Key West Lighthouse. You'll learn some interesting history while taking in the best views of the city. For a nice evening stroll, check out the Key West Historic Seaport. It's a waterfront harbor walk with restaurants overlooking the water and marina. 
Besides Hemingway House, another must-see historic home is the Truman Little White House. It was a functioning Little White House from 1945 to 1953, used by other presidents and Truman's vacation home. It is considered the birthplace of the U.S. Department of Defense and the U.S. Air Force. A lot of history here. A well-maintained home and nice grounds. You can take a guided tour for $25 per person, save about a dollar if you book online, or you can walk the grounds and check out the free portions of the Truman Little White House. By Mallory Square, you'll find the Key West Shipwreck Treasures Museum. You can see many artifacts that have been recovered by divers over the years. It feels like you're in an old ship. You can climb to the top of the tower for another great bird's eye view of the island. It's $17 per person. We took a half day to go kayaking in the mangroves of Key West. We launched our kayaks at the end of Riviera Street and headed out towards the bridge. You can enter the mangroves in any opening. It seems like you can get lost in all the little pathways, but they all lead back to the canal anyway. Take your time, paddle slowly through the mangroves, and enjoy the sunlight dappling through the trees and the beautiful roots. A really beautiful attraction a few hours by ferry off the coast of Key West is Drive Tortugas National Park. This one requires some planning ahead of time. You need to book a ferry to get to this park. The price is about $200 per person and last time I checked it was booked a year in advance. So unless you get lucky and someone cancels, you'll need to book a year in advance. Instead of the ferry, you can also book a seaplane or a private boat charter to get there. If you love gardens as much as I do, there are a few spots to check out in Key West. A beautiful free garden is right on Higgs Beach at the West Martello Towers. It's a tropical garden within the walls of a historic fort. There is also a Key West Tropical Forest and Botanical Garden on Stock Island and the Audubon House and Tropical Gardens. We've already looked at the gardens inside the Key West Conservatory. And of course, we cannot forget about all the amazing food in Key West. But that would take a whole separate video because there's so much to cover. Well, lucky for you, I made a separate Key West food tour and you need to see it before coming to Key West. So you can click to watch it on the top right corner right now if you want. Thank you for watching my ultimate Key West travel guide. If you found it helpful in planning your trip or just enjoyable to watch, please give this video a like. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe to our channel here at Flourish Ever After. I'm Julie and my husband Nick and I are currently traveling the states in a truck camper. Let me know your favorite Key West stops in the comments. Have fun in Key West and we'll see you in the next one.